Can I make another speech in Parliament, I wonder? Try to bring in some more of the moderates. Who are the big honchos in Russia? I think the only two that have really emerged the Siberian Free Territory and the mandate, uh, Divine Mandate of Siberia. This bit is still in the process of consolidating itself. This always takes longer, though. In my experience. LSOP have actually lost some. They're down to 28%. That's 22 plus 29, 51%. Reorganizing the counties. The county rate issue. The county taxation system has been destroyed by the war. We must rebuild it. This gives us the ability to set the taxes to a level that could grant us extra funds at the cost of our support. If we lower taxes, our constituents would certainly be happy, but we would also just keep the same rate if we're fine with the situation we have at the moment. So we need funds so we can raise taxes which will decrease job growth throughout the nation. But it will increase our income rate. Now, bearing in mind that our economy is actually super healthy at the moment, we can leave things where they are, which will increase domestic job growth. Or we need support so we can t cut the taxes, which will get us more political power, more stability, more construction, factory output, and all that stuff. But it will drop taxes. Now we do still have 50 billion in debt that we would like to kind of pay off so that we're not paying out the interest on this. So I'm going to say probably fine where they are. Minister, Britain has had uh, had the same foreign policy objective for the last 500 years. Oh yeah, I remember this. <laughs> Minister, Britain's had the same foreign policy objective for the last 500 years, to create a disunited Europe. In that cause, we have fought against the Dutch, against the Spanish, with the Germans, against the French, with the French and the Italians, against the Germans, with the French, against the Germans and the Italians. Divide and rule, you see. Why should we change now when it's worked so well? Sir Humpy Appleby. Yes, Minister. What a great series. Okay, Chancery rebuilding, which will build up Sussex. The destruction wrought by the civil war upon England, while tragic and deeply, deeply regrettable, has presented the government with the opportunity to modernise the nation's infrastructure. All across the country, from Dover to Liverpool, millions of miles of roads, pipes, rails and telephone lines have been shattered into pieces. Now, new elect electrical and telephone lines will be laid down. The modern pipes will replace those from the Victorian period. After this massive public works project, England will have the high-tech infrastructure it needs to carry on into the future. Cool. Actually, yeah, we probably should have done a poll there. And go back five days. See if this was before the poll or after. It hasn't happened yet. There it is. Okay, so the county rate issue. As you know, my preference would be things are fine where they are right now. Um, because we are making a surplus. We are basically maxed out our spending as is. So I don't think that our economy needs more money. We could cut taxes. Which will probably start putting us back into debt again, because it's a fairly hefty cut. It's a 20% income rate reduction. But it will increase our stability, which is already at 100%, so I just don't think we need this. And the benefits are the same. Like, the domestic job growth is still 0.01%. So, let's see. Poll. That's not the poll. Poll's probably on this monitor. It is. New poll. County rate. 
So we're going to say raise taxes. We can say keep as is. Or we can say cut taxes. And vote. Get your votes in. Vote, vote, vote. I watched Yesminster again a year or two ago. It's scarily relevant even today. Yeah, I know. I watched it probably about the same time as well, actually. And yes, for everyone that's watching, Yes Minister is a fantastic uh, series. It's a political comedy, basically. Um, which can offer some real insights into how the British government works. But it really is a comedy. Um, it's, it's easy watching. So I highly recommend it. And then there's also Yes Prime Minister, which is the series after Yes Minister. But start with Yes Minister, you'll understand more about what's going on. And who exactly... Uh, Humpy Appleby is, and why he's such an awesome character. Okay, so vote is in. And this is going to be a conservative party raising taxes, which seems a bit of an anathema. And this is going to be losing jobs. Like, we're hurting the economy directly by doing this. Cutting taxes came in with only 7%, keeping it as is came in with 41%, but raised taxes did win. So Rice Mage contributed 38,000 channel points. Thank you for that. <laughs> we so don't need this money. But we are now making a billion surplus a year. Yay, I guess. Uh, chance of rebuilding. We already read that, so we'll just continue. I think that also hurt our production, didn't it? Yes. Yes, it did. Construction speeds down. Factory output doesn't matter that much. Oh, it hurt our political power gain. God damn it. That's one thing I've been relying on, because so many of our options are related to political power. It might actually lead to instability in the future. suppose it can help rebuild the military. Ah, that's what you were after. You want to remilitarize the state. I see. Never trust chat. Oh, I learned that long ago. Gonna have to spend on social policies. Well, the problem is we can't. None are available. Remember, it's not a thing you can just turn on or off. You have to have focuses for that stuff. Alright, so. Military spending. We are still... Actually, we don't even need to cut spending anymore. But I'm still going to. Actually, one thing that we could do, seeing as we've raised taxes, I'm going to see this, especially in a conservative freaking government, as an excuse to start building some more military hardware. Um, trying to decide what I want. Improved jets. Improved cas. Oops, that's basic cast. And then also helicopters. Attack helis. Basic artillery. Support. Motorized. And scout helicopters. And I guess we should probably also make some guns. We're still making a massive surplus. A chance of rebuilding. Uh, ah, we still have a, a vote active. Which 
finishes in four days, but we'll easily win it. We have over 50%. Okay, so next up, let's go to On the Lords and Titles. Or we could start trying to open up diplomatic relations with more of the world. Which is one that we're going to need for this. Or we could try and re-establish our alliance with the OFL. No, I think we're going to re-establish our position in the world. The displacement of the previous collaborationist government after the English Civil War has left some nations in the fog. Some do not know who we are, some do not recognise our government, and others are not even aware of any change at all. We must rectify this and show that our government, our England, is the new and true England. This will allow us to take a step onto the world stage and open diplomatic and trade channels with friendly nations, rather than being forced to continue to deal with the devil of Europe. And I am also... Gonna drop another hundred political power on this. Although, okay, it's the high command is now very loyal. I wonder if you finish these, and no spoilers, don't tell me. If we get maximum on both of these, whether that goes away. It's kind of what I'm hoping. Who won in Germany? Yeah, Bormann. The act passes. An elderly man sat on a bench reading the no local newspaper. The front page reads the affairs of Westminster. Around in the streets are slightly livelier. The skies above slightly clearer. So we're going to replace public education with subsidised higher education. Political power goes up, stability goes up, research massively goes up. GDP cost goes up, taxable population goes up. More money! Academic base goes up, research facilities base goes up, and also poverty improves and the academic base societal development will begin to rapidly improve English history is written well done team and then once we have finished pushing international recognition we will then go for the counties act and try and get that passed as well and I can give another speech in parliament to keep the moderates in power Uh, we could also do some armor. Except I'm not even sure I have the technology to make those, do I? Oh, I do. Hold off for now, though. Empire of Japan and their allies have defeated Zinan in a war. Okay. Then the other thing I'm going to do is... Do I want to do that now? Now nah, we'll keep on importing oil for another 200 days or so. Can we fight? Nope. Wars are entirely done by focuses. This is a far more of a uh, economic simulator than a war sim. Okay, research is done. So we can switch to more advanced motorized, potentially. I quite like that idea, actually. Ah, no, this was commandos. Hold on. So we can do advanced special forces training, which will increase their defense, offense, and organization. Or we can just have more of them. No, we definitely want to train for the elite. And yeah, we want special forces for urban warfare. That's where I'll be using them. So let's do this. Pushing for international recognition is finished, and we also got the improved AA and also air assault. Um, right. So we'll go for the 1950s air assault. And then... Now that we're actually producing military hardware... Oh, wow, we forgot one of the construction tax. I didn't realize those were 65s. I thought they were 70s. Bugger. Definitely finishing that one. Boost civilian budget is done. Well, no it's not. We're definitely going to continue on that. And we'll continue to pay off the debt. Can I check China? I can check China. The Republic won. Uh, 
apparently. Somehow. With a new piece of legislation called the Counties Act, we can further reorganise the counties. The Act will do three things. First, any changes to the borders of the English counties after 1944 are reversed. Second, the government may not redraw county borders without the permission of the communities in question. Third, auditing and financial transparency will be greatly increased on government and their employees. This Act will cap off the ideas and small reforms regarding county reorganisation that the government has made over the past few months. I think it would be cool having some sort of non-military related things in the research tree. I agree. Like things related to GDP growth perhaps. Like the impact of uh, civilian factories on GDP. Um, also because there are... There is data. No, it's only in England. On the state economy. This is something they could push out for all nations. And then you can tweak that through technology I guess. Yes, I think that the tech tree could do with more peacetime stuff. For sure. Does gross... Germanische Reich, the Deutsche Nation, declared war in the Kingdom of Norway. Oh dear. I guess we started rearming at the right time because Germany is definitely getting more belligerent. And we have free civilian factories once more. So we'll build up Sussex. That'll keep us going for a little while. Although we're about to have three full tracks of civvies now. The Committee for the Liberation of the Peoples of Russia has declared war on the West Russian Revolutionary Front. Samara unifies Western Ru Russia. So it's just this bit that's not done anything. From their starting position as despised collaborators hold up around Samara, the Russian Liberation Army, or the ROA, has defeated every potential foe and united all of Western Russia. Little is known of the former collaborator army except for its leadership headed by General Vis Vlasov. Rumours from the fleeing refugee detail one General Bunchayenko is Vlasov's second in command, and his drive to manoeuvre the men of the ROA to revenge against the Bolsheviks and the Germans alike. The Reich has not commented on the rise of the Provisional Commissariat of Western Russia. No one knows how long Bunchayenko and Vlasov's little empire will stand, but the rise of the militarised Russia on the doorstep became an unwelcome development for the Reich. The anarchy is winding down? Maybe locally. Here's hoping the Yanks show up this time. Yeah. Venice is now a desert, really? No, Venice is plains. The stuff outside of Venice is a desert. You know, the bit that they've just drained, because it's sandy, so that makes sense. Except for this bit, which is hills. Counties Act, done. So now we need to push through the Counties Act. So at the moment we have 213 votes for. The moderates are not very in favour of this. There are like 50 votes available for the moderates. So I think we might just push the moderates twice. Because the liberals have 17. The conservatives have 14. Yeah, the moderates do not support this very much. This is mostly SLP. That's interesting. 228. I think one more push on the moderates and we'll get this. Meanwhile, we can drop another 100 on these. And government stability is now going up. Well, it should be. Meanwhile, new focus. So do we want to start on lords and titles? It's only a 30 day. No, I think we're going to do touring the Mediterranean. Open up trade with the Italians and the Iberians. While we won't find many allies near us... 
in the while we won't find many allies near to us in Europe on the Atlantic side, there are many there are more than enough diplomatic prospects in the Mediterranean who may be willing to support our government, specifically the Iberian Peninsula and the Balkans and even Italy. It helps that we share a common specter, so to speak. We should conduct an official tour of these nations with the goal of establishing connections as well as improving our own legitimacy. After all, if a nation is not recognized as legitimate, is it really a nation? It's Bunyachenko, by the way. Like bunny, but less cuddly. Okay. Oh, maybe I can only compromise once. Um, now we need to do this one. The collaborationist government under the royal party appointed hundreds of life beers or lords who would serve their goals by approving the authoritarian agenda of the fascist House of Commons. These lords, while nominally meant to be apolitical, are clearly still working together to further the goals of the now defunct royal party. While they remain in control of the House of Lords, they will eventually over-scrutinise and amend legislation that England needs to preserve itself. Though it may prove controversial, we should revoke the titles of those lords appointed by the collaborationist government, removing more of the rot that the old regime left behind. Uh, they defeated Norway. A call to the West. England's darkest days are no more. Now there is a new dawn, a dawn that's illuminated the land. England is a free nation now with a peaceful democratic system. Economic prosperity is available for every man or woman in the land, but we're still not at the heights we once were. For how can we claim to have retaken our place in the world if we do not share this prosperity with our western neighbour? Wales formed by a few well-meaning nationalists who wish to escape the fate of the United Kingdom has found itself in a new mess, one of political instability, economic mismanagement and extremism. Though it might find temporary respite, disaster always looms large in their minds and the land suffers as a result. We shall come to the Welsh with a new offer, a way out of the instability and the economic disaster, a guarantee for their way of life with representation and protection under the constitution, and special rights afforded to the nation, ones which they were denied before. All we ask in return is they think themselves as Welsh, but Welsh who are participating in a grand and historic union of all of those who live on this island. It's time to come home. Oh, Lords and Titles was stopped. Was it? Yes. Ah, the Dragon to the West. We have to do this now. Alright. With the chaotic state of Europe and the world, a divided Isles is a doomed state. Wales, with its rich coal and coastal resources, would be invaluable to reasserting our national strength. We should also not forget the nearly 1,000 year long history of unity with Wales. Their independence is a minor aberration to our be corrected with force if necessary. In the meantime, our diplomatic channels will be buzzing with anticipation of a peaceful union. Well, maybe it's a good thing that we rearmed. You know. Just in case the Welsh choose wrongly.
Okay, so apparently I cannot sway the moderates again. So the conservative wing could net me 14 votes maximum. Whereas the Liberals could net me 17, so I think I'm going to go to the Liberals. We're still about 20 votes short total. We'll compromise with them. There we go. We're not going to go with the Socialists this time. We'll spend a bit more political power. Compromised decisions for Axe do seem to have an invisible cooldown. Well, it hasn't come back yet, and there's only 20 days left. Although I guess I could have waited a bit longer. The Welsh issue. George J George Jellicoe has deemed England able to expand. Wales will soon become its likely target. The nation's been a mess from the start and will likely have no option other than to join us. After all, they're fully aware of the measures we'll be willing to use if they were dared to defy us. They would be let down some sort of madman to decline. The time for unification talks with the Welsh are upon us. A letter will be sent to Cardiff immediately to get the process started. What choice do they have? So what are we still short in? Support equipment, motorised, artillery. Oh, Cobra missiles. Uh huh. Okay, there are a couple more things we need to be producing. Cobras. And Fliegerfaust sounds suspiciously German. The drums of war. Wales have refused even to host talks with the English over the topic of unification. Clearly more aggressive measures will need to be utilised in order to bring about unification with Wales. Measures which the English have made clear they would not shy away from. Kayo and his damned clique of nationalist terrorisers will be put down. They will not stand a chance against the might of the English military. The English army will require some time to, rep to prepare, but given time, Kayo's men will be all but retreating from the cause they claim they would die for. Those in England are all in one mind over how this will end. Wales will fall. War has become unavoidable. The Free Wales Army will no doubt be prepared to defend their homeland to the degree of ferocity few could have expected from the Welsh. If the English are to avoid all-out humiliation at the hands of the FWA, more men will have to be called up to do their duty. The nation's reserves will help bring the fight to the Welsh. The generals of the English armed forces are keen to avoid even the slightest chance of humiliation at the hands of the Welsh. England's army may dwarf its Welsh counterpart, but this action is seen as necessary to bolster its ranks of soldiers and overwhelm the defenders of Wales. Nothing will be left to chance. Ready the wrath. Alright, where is the wrath? This is one screen that could do with being a little bit clearer. There they are. 